Hello, and welcome to Philip Brown's Computer Networking Lab. You're watching the instructional video called Multicast Sparse Mode Using Static Addressing. We are looking at a simple diagram of a client computer and a server connected together by three routers labeled A, B, and C. We're going to configure the multicast network with these components and we're going to make router B the rendezvous point. These are the steps that we're going to use to configure multicast. One, we are going to verify that the unicast network works correctly. Two, we are going to configure the routers for multicasting. Three, we're going to have a client request multicast traffic. And four, we're going to have the multicast server send out multicast traffic. The very first step in creating the network is to verify that the unicast connectivity is working correctly. We're going to ping the client computer using the multicast server. The pings are successful. We now know that the server and client computer can talk with one another. We need to verify that the multicast router can communicate with the rendezvous points interface. We could use the physical interfaces, but I'm going to create a loopback interface because that will never go down. We need to advertise the loopback address so that all the other routers will know about it. We are going to verify that the multicast server can ping the rendezvous point. The pings are successful. We now know that the multicast server can talk to the rendezvous point. Let's look at the commands needed to pass multicast traffic through the routers. In the global configuration mode, you will need to type the IP multicast routing command that enables the multicast routing on the router and the IP PIM RP address command that statically assigns the address of the rendezvous point. In the interface configuration mode, we will need to type in the IP PIM sparse mode command that enables PIM sparse mode on the interface. Again, let's look at the diagram of our sample network. The first step was to verify that the unicast network was working correctly, and we have already done that. In the second step, we are going to configure all the router interfaces that will be participating in multicast traffic. First, we will go to router A. Let's configure multicasting on this router and statically configure the rendezvous point's IP address. And we will configure both interfaces to use the sparse mode. Let's do the same with router B. Reconfigure multicast on the router and statically configure the rendezvous point IP address. Sparse mode is configured on both interfaces. Next, we will go to router C and do the exact same thing. The router is configured for multicasting and the rendezvous point's IP address is statically configured. 
and we will configure both interfaces to use the sparse mode. Now, let's configure the client computer to receive multicast traffic from 234.234.234.234. We could have picked any address in the multicast range, but that is my favorite for testing. We will use the IP PIM join command. Configuring multicast on the client computer using this command gives us a better idea of what is going on. Let's go to the multicast server and send out a multicast packet to all of the routers that are participating in multicasting. We will ping the multicast address and all the client computers who are listening for that address will reply. We can see that the client computer with the interface address of 10.0.3.2 has replied. The multicast is working between the server and the client computer. We have just seen how to set up multicasting in sparse mode using a statically defined rendezvous point. In the next video, we will configure a multicast network using the Auto RP listener. I hope this video has been informative and I thank you for viewing.